Welcome to another edition of Teens Today. I'm Samantha Cook. Coming up on today's show, we'll talk about a champion high school swimmer, about his sport and lofty future goals. Plus, we'll check in on the Mayor's Youth Advisory Commission and see what the future holds for the group. And we'll introduce you to a state champion Cactus High School spirit line. All of that coming up next on Teens Today. Welcome back to Teens Today. I'm Erin, and today I'll be speaking with my guest Casey, talking about MIAC. So Casey, what exactly is MIAC? Well, uh, MIAC is a group in Glendale. It stands for Mayor's Youth Advisory Commission. And really, MIAC uh, was started in the city um, well before Mayor Scruggs was, may was mayor, but um, when she actually took over, she really blossomed um, the group into what it is today. And so we're really seeing a transitional year, and um, as Mayor Wires takes over, uh, we hope to continue what we've been doing. Mayak does a lot of things in Glendale, uh, from community service to um, advising different groups. Uh, we just do a whole host of things throughout the year, and um, we're limited only to the ideas that the kids bring forth, and currently I haven't seen any limitations to what we can do. And how exactly do you become a part of MIAC? Uh, becoming a member of MIAC is really pretty simple. Uh, you can fill out an application, which is available online through the Glendale website. Just a quick search of MYAC will link you to the application. And then answering those questions and uh, sending it in to the mayor's office, uh, the executive members of MIAC will actually review those applications and then select who will be on MIAC in the next year. Uh, we hold about 50 members in the club and uh, this year we have kind of a heavy load from one school so it's really important if you do feel um, that you want to get involved with MIAC, um, get your friends and join because it's a great club to be a part of and it's a really rewarding experience uh, as a member and a citizen of Glendale. So what's some of the community service or project that you took on this year? Uh, this year we've actually taken on a lot of community service. Uh, recently, I think two weeks ago, we did two nights of community service. The first night was uh, an event that we created and it was called Skating for Spots. And our MIAC members actually went down and raised money for the Sun Valley, the Sun West Animal Shelter in Glendale by skating at Polar Ice, and we just set up a fundraiser through there. And it was, you know, a lot of fun to interact with the members and raise money. Uh, and the next night, we were actually a part of Relay for Life and put on a very nice beanbag toss and. It's just events like that that really bring the club together and really get us a part of Glendale as a whole. So what benefits do you receive from being a part of MIAC? Being a part of MIAC is, it's really about the experience, I would say. Um, my time in MIAC, this is actually my third year, I'm the current president, and what I've been able to do in the city and with other students is just, I think some of the best things I'll look back on as I kind of think back on my high school years. I actually was able to work with the Glendale Police Department. They, my sophomore year, they did something called Smart Policing Initiative and 10 grants were awarded to 10 different cities across the United States and Glendale was actually one of them. And it was looking at how do we um, reduce crime in new ways and one of those things was beer runs. and. That was an issue in the teen community, seen as, you know, we're obviously not of age to buy alcohol. So what kids would be doing was they would go into a convenience store, grab a case of beer and run out. And it was really, it was a big problem. So we actually were able to participate in trying to remedy this situation. And we participated on a stakeout. We actually hid in a van and, you know, watched and had a stakeout outside of Circle K and we went along on a ride along with the police officers 
we really got to research the issue and we actually created a public service announcement that was played on the local channels. So it's really just fun things like that that get you involved and those types of memories and those types of activities. I mean, look at you, you're <laughs> on TV right now. So it's those experiences that will really get you a lot out of MIAC. Um, one of our previous presidents, her name's Bryn Baratia, she's actually going to be interning at Congressman Trent Frank's office in D.C. this summer. And, you know, there's just a myriad of successful former MIACers and the list goes on and on. So, you know, what you can get out of MIAC is pretty much as infinite as what you can do with it. So. And how has the transition been with the new mayor? The transition has actually been very smooth, um, much to my pleasant surprise. Um, you know, every, my, every mayor of every city wants obviously the best for their city, and Mayor Wires is no different. Um, we've seen changes in our advisors, and Ann Finch actually was a part of Mayor Scruggs' administration and has continued to work with us. So um, between this year and next year, just um, transferring over that advising. Um, so it, we haven't seen the total transition, but the start of it has been very smooth and hopefully uh, Mayor Wires will continue the program. So within MIAC, there are subcommittees. And so what exactly are the subcommittees and what do they do? Uh, well, the subcommittees are headed by each officer and the subcommittees are the big project, which is what the president will cover. This year was our Skating for Spot event for raising money for little helpless Glendale animals. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it always just has to deal with the students, what issues they feel are important. And that changes year by year. And, you know, our students are just excellent and exemplary uh, teens of Glendale. So they really bring on those issues and we do a lot of good things. Teens in Glendale, and on my act felt that teens were being poorly represented represented in media so they wanted this tv show to kind of get that give themselves a better name and a better representation and so um, it's a lot of work putting this show on and our vice president does an excellent job of that and the whole committee really works hard as i'm sure you know putting these stories together uh, the next one is the treasurer and she runs fundraising and that's anything from our chocolate affair and in years past it was Christmas angels and working in the snow fields at Glendale Glitters. Uh, among other things, we have the social secretary who plans social events um, from laser quests to um, movie nights. You know, MIAC is a lot of fun as well as a lot of work, so it really balances it out with the social aspect. And I believe the last committee is the historian, and she just runs the slideshow, taking pictures, and you know, creating that those memories and documenting them. Thank you for joining me today. Thank and you. Stay tuned for more teens today. I am C. Repio, and this is Glendale. And I'm Anthony Daniels, and it's still Glendale. Welcome to Teens Today. With me is Jacob Lambros, Division II Swimming State Champion. So, what were you state champion in? I was state champion in the 200 freestyle and the 100 freestyle. What were those races like? Well, to start off, I usually have a pre-race routine. I usually get stretched out, kind of warm up before I walk in and um, being the seated the first seed in the in the meet kind of puts me at edge giving me the lane in the middle of the pool and I also have the privilege of picking the song that I get to end, to walk into and I picked a very song a good song that pumps me up and be, being that song um, it was kind of a screamo techno song that I kind of enjoy. Um, but I walked in and I got really pumped. Um, and then once I got behind the block, my mind cleared and I was in the zone. I, before I was shaking and now I wasn't. Uh, I was in the zone and they called me up to the blocks and I dive in off my block. It was a really good dive. 
and I go to the first turn. Very good turn. I was actually really impressed with the first turn. Um, and then with me, my stroke, I breathe to the right. So I couldn't see um, the swimmer next to me uh, in the pool. So going to the first 25, I was kind of feeling the, feeling the vibe. And the coming back on the second 25, I saw him out of uh, my goggles and he was ahead of me. And being myself, I'm very competitive. I definitely kind of build up a little bit um, and added to my speed. And going into that next turn, I he was in front of me and, uh, and I was falling behind and I could tell. Um, and the third 25, I was very fatigued. Uh, it's a short race, but it's a, it's a high stimulus race. And uh, my body was getting tired. But I said to myself, I am here in this pool. I have, there's a reason why I'm here. I've been training for this moment for a very long time and I'm not going to let it uh, get away from me. So I kind of build it up a little bit in that third 25 and coming out of that turn, uh, my swimming opponent was right next to me still, but um, I kind of had a jolt of adrenaline and I com coming off that wall, I was explosive and I was going very fast and through the whole 25 while I was looking at my opponent, um, he was getting farther back and I was gaining speed and by the end I finished a tenth of a second in front of him. It was a very close race. Okay, how long have you been doing this for? Well, I, uh, I have actually been swimming since I was six years old. Uh, my parents actually, during the summer, they didn't want me running around the house and causing a lot of chaos. So they put me in a swim program using the city of Phoenix, city of Peoria, um, into uh, a swimming program. And I've been doing that since, uh, since high school. And I've, I've always loved that. I mean, being able to do that in the summer is just, it was fun to be able to do. And uh, becoming, or going into my uh, high school, we, uh, my school just started a swim team and it was a new thing, and I was like, all right, let's just let's do the swim team because I wasn't really that big into, big into football. So uh, I started out the swim team, and I got a lot better. I dropped nearly 10 seconds in my 100 free um, with that coach, and I asked the coach what a good club team was, and he, uh, he named me a few of them, and I picked one, but I got progressively better, and... Uh, after that, I joined a club team and, and got rocking and rolling in there. So I've been swimming for four years now, ever since then. Well, that's a lot of dedication. How does that affect your life outside of swimming? Well, I uh, swim another, I guess, schedule for me. Um, I kind of wake up, go to school uh, from 8 to 3, go home, get something to eat. Food is very important get something to eat, um, and then go to practice from 5 to 7, and, and then get home around 7.30, eat, and then um, I kind of do any of the homework that I have for about an hour, um, and then go to bed because sleep is another thing that, um, that is necessary for, for me as a swimmer. Um, but I'm one of those guys that in, uh, in your class who stays behind and finishes his homework until the bell because um, the more the more you stuff you do, the more homework you do in class, the less you do at home. So that was my mentality all of high school. Um, with my swimming schedule, it's a it's a hectic schedule with balancing school and swimming, and um, and doing homework is is an essential part of school, and um, it's a necessity. So I I make time for that, and uh, and during the nights is when I do that. But swimming definitely takes a lot. A lot out of your your everyday schedule. So, what have you learned from this rigorous lifestyle? What do you think you can take away from it, and do you think others should pursue it? 
I definitely agree. Uh, swimming has given me a kind of a chance um, to be able to um, express myself. And I think um, like going through things in my life and swimming has always been there uh, for me. It's, it's, it hasn't changed. Um, and I think um, a lot of youngsters out there, um, kids should be able to pursue that um, swimming. And I think there's a lot of uh, clubs and activities out there that that help with that um, activity and swimming does a lot for you um, versus any other sport swimming doesn't usually do uh, use gravity so uh, we're all going against uh, water resistance and it's a horizontal sport so um, you definitely get a lot more um, like a total body workout uh, from swimming and it's used a lot in therapy for that reason and um, you definitely get a lot a lot better workout for your your whole body and um, I think youngsters kids out there uh, should be able to pursue that and uh, and I think that they'd, they'd have a lot of fun with it well that sounds excellent I think everyone should pursue swimming I too swim and I can say it is a great physical exercise and mental exercise. And I wish you luck for all that you have planned with your life in swimming. Thank you, John. I appreciate that. Well, thank you for coming today. Of course. Coming up next, we'll have more teens today. If I ride, I will know the way the trees smell after the rain. I will grow a heart so strong that hospitals will take Tuesdays off. If I ride, Road rage will turn into laughter. And oil tankers will haul chocolate milk. And I won't be a boy or a girl. I will just be a rider. Hi, my name is Samantha Cook. And with me today, I have an outstanding member of one of Cactus High School's wonderful cheer teams, Lauren. So what makes your program different from everyone else's? Our awesome Spirit Line program um, is coached by Candace and Holly Schultz. We compete at a state level and we actually do a bunch of competitions throughout the year as well as cheering for football and basketball games and supporting our school in whatever they need. Um, we give back to the community a lot and we're a really close-knit group of girls. We have a lot of fun together and we have a bond like no other team out there. So how is being a part of the cheer your team affected you? Oh, being part of the Varsity Spirit Line for the past three years has affected me immensely. Um, it's one of my favorite things to do at school. I'm in a lot of clubs and extracurriculars, and I'd say cheer is definitely one of my favorites. I've learned how to be a good teammate and all about hard work and dedication. We practice crazy hours, and but good hours. Um, we practice five to six times a week, and we it just has really made a big impact on my life. What are some of the accomplishments with the team as well as personal accomplishments with yourself? For the team, um, the past three years that I've been on it, we've won state twice and we've come in runner-up twice, which is a great accomplishment. Not many teams get to say that. Um, we've gone to nationals in Anaheim, California, and we got fifth place twice in a row. Um, we compete in competitions five to six times throughout the year and we win most of those. We get first place in a lot. Uh, personally, on a personal level, I've accomplished a lot through cheer. I've learned how to be a better teammate to others, how to work well with other people. I've gotten better um, with my cheerleading abilities, more flexible, those types of things, more tumbling. Um, all over, I think our program is one of the best out there. We learn a lot. So for you, how much commitment does it take to be a part of the cheer team? There's a big part of commitment. It's a, it's a lot of commitment, but to be on the varsity spirit line is a big commitment. Um, it's a lot of time and a lot of hard work that we put into it, but it's all worth it in the end. Getting so close to 17 other girls and having two coaches that are so great is worth the commitment. Um, we do practice five to six times a week, and those are pretty long practices, so that's a big commitment, but other than that, it's so worth it. I know you've mentioned giving back to your community. What are some examples of how you did that? Uh, one of the greatest ways that we do that 
is through our cheer clinics. Uh, we have one coming up May 14th. It's an awesome way to give back to the community and get girls interested in cheer. It's for kindergarten through eighth grade. It's reaching out to all the feeder schools and community um, around Cactus. And we teach all the little girls a dance and cheers. And we get, to, um, we get to meet them and just have fun with them. For those girls in the clinic, what do they do when you, they learn the dances? We teach them a halftime dance and a few cheers. And they get to perform those cheers at a halftime either um, for football or for basketball. It's really, it's really fun for them and for us too. We get to enjoy watching them do a dance that we taught them and we get to see the look on their parents' faces, which is the best part. Um, they're really proud of their daughters for learning a whole entire dance and a cheer and being able to perform it in front of high school students and everybody, all the community that comes to all of our games. So for girls that wanna join cheer, how would they do that? I'd suggest coming to the clinics, if you're in middle school especially, because you will be trying out in the next few years. Um, it really takes a lot of hard work. There's tumbling classes, dance classes, those types of things that you can go out and find, and those will really benefit you in the end when you are at tryouts and you know how to do everything. Now, if they wanted to join at Cactus High School, how would they do that? They would contact um, Candace Schultz or anybody at the school. You can go online and find the tryout dates and you just fill out a tryout packet, come to a few meetings, and then you go to tryouts. Do you have any advice for any of those girls that are looking to try out? The advice I would give is to keep working hard, take tumbling classes, dance classes, whatever opportunities you can get to improve your cheer skills will really help you in the end. Um, just try out. It, it can't hurt to try out. That's the best advice. Well, thank you, Lauren, for joining us today. Thank you. And thank you for watching and for a wonderful season. We'll see you next year. Bye-bye.